Hey everyone, Kyle here from Bostic Family White Show. We hope you've enjoyed part one and part two in this video series. In today's part three, we're gonna show you how we put the Falcon F16 V3 and expansion board into our enclosure, how we mounted and wired it up, and how we configured it in x -Lights. All right, here we go. All right, so this is inside our enclosure. This is the box we built for our mega tree, and it houses our F16 V3 and expansion board. We got this bottom plate here from Ikea. It's actually just a cutting board. It was like a dollar or two. And then that allowed us to mount the F16 V3 mounting plate and the power supplies to it. We have these power supply mounting brackets that allow us to stack multiple Meanwhile, power supplies inside this enclosure. Over here, we have our Ray Wu connectors that have been stripped back. And then we have the Falcon connectors on here. And then we also have the Ethernet wiring for the network connection and the serial data connection. We ended up using these little spacers right here. And what these are, are just drywall anchors that we drilled out the F16 V3 mounting board and glued them into place. This allows the board to sit off of the mounting plate and we can route the wiring and ribbon cable underneath the, the F16 V3 and expansion board. And it makes inside this box just a little neater if you need to do any troubleshooting or change any fuses or anything like that. So let me get the next power supply in here. So we have these power supplies here and they have these little rubber grommet or feet. And those came with these brackets here, which allow you to stack these power supplies nice and neat inside this enclosure. The cool thing about these is it makes it easy to slide it out. Um, if you need to swap it in the middle of a show, if you have a power supply die or something, you just need this Phillips screw and you can get it swapped out in a few seconds. All right, so now we have these put into place. I'm gonna run the power wire that we'll need for the F16 V3 and we'll get that mounted and then I'll show you how we connected everything. All right, so now that we have our distribution power wire ready to go, we are gonna connect it to the voltage in one and voltage in two over here. Make sure that this slider right here is set to the correct voltage, whether you're using five or 12 volts. Canis Bader Christmas has a really good in-depth video on all the different ports and options that are configured here. If you're just getting started with these controllers and want to know more specifically about the controller, definitely recommend checking those videos out. All right, so now that these are in, you want to make sure that you don't see the wire sticking out of either of these ports. If you can see a bunch of copper or if the copper strands are touching each other, you're creating a dead short and that's gonna be really bad. So just make sure you are careful of that. All right, so now we have the F16 mounted. We don't have any of the wiring besides the power connected to this yet and then what I did next is I took the ribbon cable for the expansion board and I got this connected. This is, this just slides into the F16's expansion board slot. Lock. And then what we can do is do something like that. And this will allow the ribbon cable to go underneath. And if you need to troubleshoot or change any fuses, you'll have better access because the ribbon cable goes underneath 
of this board, and that's the reason we use those standouts. So we still have to connect the or route the power from this power supply to our expansion board. And what I'll do is lift this up, route the power wire underneath and back over. And then this one, you can either do something like that, or you could route it underneath this one and around this one and back in. It's really kind of up to you. I just try to keep them out of the way, so. Alright, so now that both of the boards are mounted, we can start to connect all of our pigtails that we have coming out of the enclosure. The way we did this is we got the clamps from Home Depot. Um, I'll put a link in the description. And then we stripped back the weatherproof coating for the Raywood connectors. We labeled each one on the inside and the outside. And then we basically just zip tied everything so it's nice and neat in here. And then you'll want to make sure that the correct number that you have labeled goes to the correct port. All the ports are labeled. All right, so as you saw, I forgot to route the ethernet wire underneath. So I lifted the board up, ran it underneath, screwed it back down. And then we're gonna connect this one to our DMX output over here. And then this one right here is going to be for our ethernet. These two jacks right here are for the network connection. The jacks over here are for serial data or the DMX. All right, so now that that's connected, we can connect this thing to power, the board will turn on, and then from there we can configure it in x lights and make sure everything's ready to go and make sure that our pixels light up. So once you boot this up for the first time, you'll see the IP address right here. And once you have an assigned IP address, you can open up your computer and a web browser, navigate in the URL to this IP address, and it will open the web interface. You can do some additional settings in there. And then we'll also copy this IP address and put that into Xlites. That way Xlites will be able to communicate with the controller or this enclosure. All right. so. Now we will open our web browser and we will type in the IP address we see on the Falcon controller. And that will bring us to a screen that looks like this. And this will basically show us the information that shows us the uptime, shows us the temperature, which voltages we're running. You can add CPU fans to this and it will tell you those temperatures as well. You can go into the network configuration tab. You can set a name for it. You can use DHCP, which means that it will get an IP address automatically from your DHCP server. If you turn this off, you can assign it statically and have a manual IP address. And once you make any changes, you're gonna to wanna to save and reboot. Once everything is configured, you can go in and you can test and make sure everything that is connected works. So right now we have this 50 count of pixels connected so we should be able to get those to turn on. 
and right now they're set to do a color wash but we could change this to like a red ramp we could do green blue or even white so now that we know the controller is working the pixels are controlled we can configure it in excellence so we'll open up our show folder open up the controller tab we'll see our controller but the IP address is still using the old one so what we're gonna do is click on the IP address over here and we'll change the IP address to be the new IP address for the new controller once we go ahead and enter that go ahead and save all right so now that we have this IP address set I'll give it just a minute and once we click on it again the light changes over to green now we should be able to test this out and make sure everything's working so we can go down to tools test it will bring up all of the different outputs that are configured you can come over to models over here and it shows everything that is configured and this basically just selects everything as you can see they're on and starting to do this chase pattern we can change the different test outputs over here but now we've confirmed everything works and this enclosure is ready to go hopefully this was helpful if you have any questions leave a comment or shoot us a message we're looking forward to our video next week where we go over pixels so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button see you next time